what's the name Coke? Because you're drinking Coca Cola, or is it because you no? Know? I mean, originally my name was Coke O. You know, that was from the chocolate milk thing. My grandfather gave me that name. But then as I got older, I couldn't, you know, I didn't mind the women calling me Coco, but you couldn't have guys calling you Coco, Coco, you know. So I did, they would just call me Coke, C-O-K-E, not to say drug-wise or Coca-Cola drinking, just Coke. And um, then I added the La to it. Let's clear up one thing. It's been written in books that you come from a Jamaican heritage. No, that's, that's cool, Herc. Um, I, my family come from North Carolina. I was born in the Bronx. I had fast feet, you know. My feet could move pretty fast, you know, so. Was it mostly like James Brown type moves? Or? Semi, 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 but, you know, I just created my own moves, you know. And in my little neighborhood, you would get beat up for copying a guy's moves. Right. That's how serious that dance it was. A guy would be like, oh, you took my move. I see, I did that move last week, you know, and it, <laughs> It was crazy like that, you know, <laughs> and um, I could dance pretty well, you know, and then me and Herc really got real tight, you know, we started hanging together and rolling, and um, then he said he was going to have a party, you know, and um, he had the party, and our whole crew came, we all Is that came. Cindy's birthday party? That's Cindy's birthday party. Okay. That's why I said all of my people that ever said they was dead, I ain't calling names, any any of these guys. Okay, who was there? Was Sasa there? Sasa was there, matter was, of fact. Was, was, were, were the Nigger Twins there? Nigger Twins wasn't there yet. See, they wasn't with us yet then. Okay. Only Sasa. Clark Kent, was he there? He's Because he come with the Nigger Twins. It okay. was only Sasa, and this is a corner picture of Sasa right here. He's on the edge of this. That's the amazing Sasa. That's the first B-boy that cats could never touch. And then all of a sudden it took off where guys just was battling guys as far as breakdancing. Was there any talking on the mic at Cindy's birthday party? Yeah, but it was just, like I said, just calling out my friend names. Right. You, you mean understand? just recreate it, like the first rap you did. Can you okay. remember anything? The, the first one was like, there's not a man that can't be thrown, a horse that can't be rolled, a bull that can't be stopped. There's not a disco that I cook the rock can't rock. And I put the echo in the echo chamber. That's why you got Coke La Rock, 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 Cool DJ Herc and Coke La Rock. The series. Okay, so but at the very first party, you guys were rocking the echo and making rhymes. Yeah, yeah. But I was calling guys' names right, out. Right, right. I was saying like like my crew. My head ease. My man, it would go like Easy Al, Skip from the Joint, Norm Rockwell, Mid Paradise. You know, cats' names, and I would tell you go move your car like. Easy out, you double parking me, go move your town's car. And we like 15, 16, so you'd be like, all right, I'm gonna move my car. So the girls be like, ooh, he got a car. You ain't got no car out there, <laughs> you know. And my man, money bill, dollar bill, you know. I used to say he had a million dollars, he ain't have 50 cents, you know. So <laughs> that's all it was, it was hyping us up and laugh and dance and talk. And I wasn't a talker, I wasn't a, a verbal guy. Not that I was shy, so. I would be in the room, I was in the recreation room, but then the, the where we played the music, I was there by myself. So no one seen me talking for about the first two weeks. They didn't really know that was me in there. You know, I was selling weed, and weed went with the party. And um, I went from nickel bags to a half an ounce to selling a quarter pound, you know, selling 160, 180 nickels bagged up in two hours while I played the music and while I did what I did, talked and rapped and, from there on, it just was like a, a magic carpet ride. You realize we're rewriting hip hop history because Cowboy basically got credit for being the first one to make up rhymes. Yeah, no, see, like, like I said, that's why I said a lot of cats are saying what they said, and then they still saying they was first at certain things. I, I can't understand it, but it's, it, they're getting paid. Guys got paid and getting the glory for things that they said. I heard one guy said, I wrote nursery rhymes. I mean, I was a hustler, man. I, I, I stayed, you know, it was no punk in me. It was none of that. And everything I said really related to the party, you know. So if I was saying this then, how was they saying it? You know, just like you rock and you don't stop. You know, that was Coca-Cola Rock. You started it. I started you rock and you don't stop. Because the crowd went like this. And I was like, oh, wow, they rocking and you don't stop. Just like Sugar Hill and them, I'm not, I hate to say names, but when they took Hotel Motel, 
That was me. That came from a rhyme I put together after I felt what I knew what I was doing, right. which is called A Freak is Unique. Most of that Sugar Hill Gang first song was all ripped off Grandmaster K. Okay, and, and I agree to that. It, I agree to that, but the because Superman, I went, I went to school stuff. with Hank. Right. Hank, wasn't, Hank wasn't a DJ. Right. Hank was nowhere. He wasn't even a street guy. Not to down him. He's my brother. I love Hank. Right. But he wasn't into the hip-hop game, but I heard he had the equipment, you know, and it went with the guys then, you know. And, and once I stopped, I stopped before Flash and them even became who they was. I stopped before any of these guys even became who they was. You Were you know? there when Hurt got stabbed? I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't there when it actually happened. I, I left, I went to go use the bathroom. And when I came back, I seen police cars in front of the spot. So I thought, all right, something happened, you know, but never thought it was Hurt. Then as I got closer, a couple of my friends ran out and they was like, Hurt just got stabbed, he's, he's in the hospital, Bronx Lebanon. So I'm like, whoa. So I said, who did it? Because I always kept my gun with me. See, I always kept the gun. Herc wasn't the guy with the gun. I asked the people, like, yo, where these guys at? So one guy, no name, he said he stabbed the guy about 20 times, a good friend of mine. So I said, did you kill him? He said, I think it, because I stabbed him 20 times. So I told him, yo, take me to where you stabbed him at so I can put two in his head, right, to make sure. He said, no, no, go check on Hurt, man, because I think he was really hurt. So when I got to the hospital, I went right to the hospital, and he was still on the gurney. His, his mother and father had popped up, and his sister was there. And, you know, I start breaking down. You know, I'm crying, I'm bugging out, and I'm trying to find out who these guys are, what happened. And then Hurt knew, because I, I was bugged out, and his father knew. His father, so his father came to me and said, um, Coke, give me your gun. And I looked at him and I was like, no, don't do that. Don't take my gun, you know? He said, no, you gotta do something bad. He said, um, I'll give it back to you tomorrow. He said, but I want you to not have it tonight. And then, you know, I'm weeping. I'm like, oh man, don't do that, don't do that. So then he said, all right, wait a minute. So he went in there with Hurt. Then all of a sudden, Hurt called me in the room. You know, he ain't even go up to get stitched up yet. He said, yo, Coke, don't do nothing. Wait till I get all right. And I looked at him, though, and his father told him, like, tell me, like. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll wait. And when I went back out in the waiting room, I gave his father the gun, and then I just went home. Then the next day, I went right to the house, knocked on the door, he gave me my gun back. I went and found Mike Mike, who work with us. He was the only guy that was right there. And we went hunting for these cats. And um, I didn't know specifically which one it was, but we went in a pool room where they was at. And two of his friends, which I knew them, but I didn't know the guy that stabbed her. This pool room, everybody cleared out. And then one of them was like, yo, Coke, man, don't do nothing crazy. I was like, what? And I put two bullets in his hand. This is what's going to happen. Don't talk to me, man. My man got stabbed, I'm going to kill whoever did it. And they sent the guy down south, you know, but he was stabbed up, but he got well, and that was that. But I never met him personally, the guy that actually stabbed him. But he was one of the executive playhouse guys, you know. It was all a mis... not even a misunderstanding, it had to be a little deeper, but it had nothing to do with her. It was really? they just tried to get in the party, and. One of our guys stopped them and it, it, it escalated. And um, Herc never knew it was happening. When he came to try to figure out what was going on, the guy just stabbed them. It wasn't like they had a beef or nothing like that, you know? And that's when it really made me like get to another level, you know? Now it's about murder, you know? And I didn't get into this to be into that, you know? I, I would defend us if somebody tried to rob us or something, but. It wasn't just about trying to kill nobody, but after that, you know, my outlook in it was, I've been in it a good while. You know, it's gonna come to murder, you know? So that's when I started falling back. And then I fell back when my son was born, you know? And my son, middle name is LaRock. See, this is why I said, even before cats became who they was, I named him Dante LaRock. His middle name on his birth certificate is LaRock, and, he, and he'll be 32 in November, you know, to show you. 
I, I, I really had a thing with this hip hop thing, but on another level, you know, not bugging out where I named them because I was high, but I knew, like I said, La Rock was my name. I was going to be coming and running into the top of my fame, you know, in the game, and that was hip hop. This is to everybody, everybody on the planet. I would like to invite you to the High Times Cannabis Awards. The original Coke Rock will be there, and and I gotta give them credit. You know why? Because they they holding on to a piece of the gold. I'm like the last piece of the rock. I am Coke Rock, and come there, come out there and check it out. I'm a weed smoker. I've been that forever, and I want you to come. Come and enjoy yourself. Thank you, High Times, for recognizing Coke Rock cannabis. Everybody, come on.